Hi, this is Mig Geek and I'm Dan, and welcome back to Robot Camera Part 2. We've learned some new tricks. This is a coordinated movement across four axes, well, five axes if you include the zoom, coordinated on the same time basis. So rather than having to try and figure out what relative feeds to use, I can just say I would like this whole move to take 10 seconds. Let's go back. Now, it's hard to tell from this side, but it seems to be doing a pretty good job of keeping the camera pointed at me. And that is the kind of crazy cool stuff you can do with electronics. Now let's take a look at the improvements I made since part one. Okay, so here we are at the beginning of part two of Robot Cameraman, and you are very sadly stuck back on a boring tripod. Um, but hopefully, by the end of this video, we will have a proper home for the uh, Rogue Cameraman and the camera will stay there pretty much forever. And that starts with this piece of steel. Uh, this is probably overkill, but this is going to be the base plate for the whole structure. We have a hole in the middle for the pivot pin that will ultimately be welded into this. I have four uh, tapped threaded holes um, which will hold the 3D printed uh, cog onto this that will ultimately be the rotation axis and another four holes to screw it to this stool. <laughs> I was going to make something, I was thinking, you know, welding like a tripod or something and then I realised I have this old stool that's been kicking around the house uh, which we don't really have any purpose for, which is probably perfect. Like It's already a structure, it's about the right height that I had in mind. I can just screw a plate onto it here, I can lift it around the workshop and I can add weight low down in the rungs. Let me lift that up so you can see it. I have a little wooden pl plate across just at the moment with some weights on it. Uh, so I should be able to make uh, enough weight to make it stable whilst also be able to move it around. This saves me a ton of, uh, of work. So first challenge, get the pin in here and keep it square and vertical whilst I weld it because having this surface flat to the uh, the plate at the bottom of the crane is going to be pretty important. So let's do that. Okay, so a slightly sketchy setup. It's a bit difficult to manipulate all this stuff, but I have that plate here with the pin running all the way through now, in the final thing, there will be a 3D printed cog between these two surfaces, but I want these to be set with each other, so I'm actually using the welding clamp to clamp this bottom plate of the crane to this plate whilst I weld this in. Hopefully that will keep me all square. Uh, now I just need to find what the hell I did with my welding gloves. Somewhere I have a nice new pair of running gloves, whatever. Uh, so hopefully I won't even need any filler for this. I'm just gonna, I'm really just gonna tack it in place. All I need it to do is not, not come out. Gas. <laughs> This is kind of uh, unwieldy and awkward because all of the electronics is still in this corner. Uh, this would be much easier to do with a bit more space, but once I've got this essentially mounted, I can begin like moving the related electronics onto this base as well, and then we'll be able to move it. Uh, so I need to get this cog installed between them uh, and hopefully bolted to the plate. Uh, here 
and I need this plate to be screwed to the stool. It's just a bit ungainly. Uh, right. I guess the, the good news already is that um, even with the weight of this fully tipped forwards with no counterbalancing on, the weight of the stool is enough for it not to tip. So that's good. Uh, right, screw. All right, that is now attached. Swingy, swingy. This is definitely one of those operations where you need to be quite careful with your fingers because uh, obviously when it's off of its stand, it wants the, the whole scissor actually wants to collapse on you. So when you're picking it up, suddenly <laughs> suddenly the forces involved are, can be a bit, a bit weird. Um, which is why I have the block of wood to keep it stable, keep it fixed. Even then you have to be a bit careful. Um, I want to make sure that it doesn't want to shift on you. Uh, right, I think what I could do, <laughs> should I just a space? I think I can do this. It is at this point, viewers, when I have this heavy thing in my lap, that I realise I don't think I have an Allen key to hand to put these in. Right, when I, if I clear the stool off, and I can put this back on the stool. I'll just use that to weigh him there for a second. Right. Definitely should have had this properly to hand. That being said, we should be able to put this back on for hopefully, he says jinxing it, the last time. He says jinxing it, he says jinxing it. is the top of the stool does limit the upper range of motion and the lower range of motion so what I'm probably gonna do is cut that off <laughs> cut that off a bit slight plan adjustment I had uh, a few uh, just like an off cuts of chipboard and I have cut a bunch of rounds just to stack them up to give me a little bit more height um, so the plan is I'll screw you know one to the stool and the next to the next to the next to the next to the next and I also trimmed my steel plate down so it's round hopefully the combination of a little bit more height and a little bit whatever will just allow that motion to be slightly bigger if I do need to trim the tool stool as well I will but let's uh Let's get this all screwed in and see what happens. I whipped up this uh, bracket, just uh, welded a couple of the offcuts from the steel base plate at right angles and drilled some holes so I could mount my the bracket the motor came with uh, to a piece of steel and I just drilled some holes to line up with the threaded tapped ones I already had on the base plate and hopefully if I've got everything right I can now just 
bolt this on, of course, it's going to be awkward because obviously it would be. Hopefully what I haven't done. Okay. There we go, motor mounted and we can see we're getting pretty good contact. So hopefully it will be powerful enough to actually drive it itself when I finish wiring up. So I got it as far as doing a quick test and I guess I'll insert the video of that test here. The video actually looks pretty good, but in person the rotation was dropping a lot of steps and that is because this is the motor that uh, was set up to do that rotation axis uh, and it has, I believe the spec sheet says 0.4 newton meters of holding force and it just wasn't quite enough energy, like say so it definitely moved it but it was just dropping steps all over the place where it just couldn't provide enough of So this is plan B. Uh, as you can see, this is a rather larger beast altogether. This is a NEMA 23 motor, uh, for which I have a whole new driver unit, which is also about 50% bigger than the drivers for these, uh, and a new power supply. Hopefully, with this custom printed bracket, I'll be able to get that in place, and it will have a little bit more um, get up and go. Let's see if that works. It's kind of laughable how much bigger this NEMA 23 is than this NEMA 17. Uh, this is a, a bad boy. I've made a new mount for it, uh, reprinted the cog. Uh, the only thing that's different is on the 17 I have all this wire to work with, and on the 23 it's it's kind of short. Now I am going to create plug interfaces for the wires, but I actually need a little bit more slack than this just to accept the rotation of that axis. So I got myself a bunch of new wire of the right gauge. Uh, I got some heat shrink wrapping. I'm just gonna extend these wires by maybe double, um, just to give myself a little bit of room. And then we will get it reattached. Um, Soldering is not that exciting. So you'll come back hopefully when we're ready to test again. So yep, I made a quick panel just to have the rotation and lift motors in. I might do another one like this for the other motors, but for now those are still controlled uh, underneath underneath the platform. But this all needs to come off of here, I think, because ultimately, as well as this gimbal, I think I want this whole platform to be able to be set either this way or flipped down so I can get overhead shots. But that'll be later. For now, we have power switch control the new power supply which is feeding each of the steppers which are kind of tucked in here at the moment and I moved the control screen onto the bottom of the stool here I did actually did do a bunch of fiddling around whilst it was still connected up over there but multiple times 
the cable got caught and like literally yanked out of the side of <laughs> the side of here. So this is a much better place for it. Uh, let me just fire up the software. Let's just bring up. Uh, this is the version two interface. Uh, new brand color buttons. I have some on-screen controls because I decided uh, that was going to be useful just for mostly for testing actually when it's not connected to anything um, but uh, the important um, the new important control is by default we're still in this mode move millimeters per minute and we set a feed rate but this button here is where the magic happens now we move for uh, a fixed number of seconds and that is what makes getting the coordinated uh, movement possible. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we can toggle between crane and gimbal, move rate and move time, have some controls for testing. We still have waypoints, etc. So probably more enhancements to be made, but for now, this is pretty much it. Just as before, <clears throat> We have control of the gimbal. I've now made this button toggle so that I can switch to controlling the crane instead. So if I toggle to the gimbal, let's make it point. Let's make it point at us. Go up a bit. Right, so we'll set that as position Y, pointing at us from there. And then we'll uh, shuffle the crane around. Let's just move it there and let's say, let's take it up. Now oh, let me get rid of this, which is just resting on there for a second. Okay, so we'll move the crane to there and now let's make the uh, camera point back at us. Uh, So let's call it that. Position Y is back here, and then position X, uh, B is kind of over, over here a little bit. So if I move at feed rate, and we'll watch how well the camera tracks to us, you kind of see that it turns over our shoulder over here first, and then one, once it's arrived at its place, then it's pointing back at us, which is not what we want. And again, it's a little bit better going that way, but it kind of overshoots and then corrects back to us, which again, not really what we want. So magic button, we'll go move seconds. And I so let's try a fairly slow 20 second tracking shot. Camera is slightly off center, maybe, but I think it's doing pretty well. Cameraman part two. We now have lift and rotate and the gimbal. Uh, you can do some interesting panning shots like that. There's still a little bit more work I want to do. I think 
the gimbal needs some upgrades now. There's still some challenges keeping certain things centered through moves, uh, depending on exactly how wide of an arc I'm doing, but pretty happy, pretty happy with how it's going. Uh, in fact, I should, I guess, last thing, show you that I also have it all hooked up to the television so I can see Trippy. <laughs> I love it. So, thanks for watching. See you next time.